right guys um welcome back to another video today um let's just move up um yeah today's video um hope you all doing well today's video is not going to be man city related for a change it's going to be i predicted euro 2021 england squad well they say it's going to happen in 2021 we'll have to see but yeah this is my 23 man squad prediction and um, i've picked this on um I've uh, picked this on just purely who I players I think deserve to be in the squad and um, picked them on form and I've, it's basically who I think will be in the squad in a year's time. Now I've, I've made some harsh decisions. I've messed up. I've left some players out who you might feel should be in, but this is just my twenty-three man squad. Um, I'm gonna tell you all the reasons why I've chosen these players um, from each position. Um, so we'll start off with the goalkeepers. Um, let's have a look. So the goalkeepers, we've got a uh, first choice. I've gone for Dean Henderson. He's a first goalkeeper. Um, yeah, Dean Henderson, it's a no-brainer for me. He's kept uh, the most clean sheets in the Premier League this season. Um, keeping, he's kept 11 clean sheets, uh, 10, 10 clean sheets this season. Sorry, um, actually, Tom. Nick Pope's made the most, but Henderson made the second most, making 10 clean sheets. But for me, individually wise, I think Henderson's been a better keeper this season than um, Pope. I think for me, he's got to be England's number one. He's made some some of his performances for Sheffield United have just been outstanding this season. He's single handedly won them games by making amazing serves. Just talks of him going back to Man United being their number one keeper, I wouldn't be surprised. But it has to be Dean Henderson for me. He's been the best English goalkeeper in the Premier League this season. But the, the interesting question will be is whether he'll be at Sheffield United or Man United next season. He might go to Sheffield United on loan again and keep on developing. Still only you'd remember. 21 years old, I think. Um, sorry, that's two seconds. But yeah, for me, it has to be Dean Henderson, who um, is our number one goalkeeper for the Euros. So yeah, I've gone for Henderson first choice. Says it all. He's, for me, one of the best goalkeepers in the Premier League this season. It'll keep on getting better. Second goalkeeper I've gone for will be the second choice is, uh, of course, Nick Pope, who I mentioned. He's kept the most clean sheets in the Premier League this season, keeping 11 clean sheets. Played a massive part in uh, Burnley, pretty much being comfortable in the league again this season, the mid-table. Quality keeper, big unit, 6'6", six six, I think. He's played amazing for Burnley, and it's a no-brainer he makes his squad. Some people could argue and say he could be number one over Henderson, but for me, he's a he will definitely push Henderson, I'll tell you that. They're the two best keepers we have in there, yeah. It has to be Nick Pope for number two. He's been fantastic for Burnley. He kept the most clean sheets in the Premier League, 11 clean sheets. He has to be number two in this squad for me. Now onto the third choice. Now this is going to cause some debate, this. Yes, I have left Jordan Pickford out of the squad altogether. For me, he's been awful for Everton this season. Hasn't been good enough. Just because you have a good 2018 World Cup and make a few penalty serves doesn't make you a class keeper. I think since then he's dropped off a lot and this season he's been very poor. And for me, he doesn't deserve to be in this squad, let alone be number one keeper. So for the third choice keeper, I've gone for Tom Heaton. Now, I know he's injured at the moment, but he will be back come then. And um, when he's played for Aston Villa before his injury, he's single-handedly kept Villa in games. Villa have missed him a lot since he's been injured. The form's dipped off, and I think he's a great keeper, Tom Heaton. I'd definitely have him as a number three. Whether he'll push for number one, I'm not sure, but he's definitely a worthy number three. So I'd have Heaton over Pickford, and then my three goalkeepers. On to the two right-backs, I've got out. As much as I'm a Man City fan, leaving Carl Walker out was hard, but it's a no-brainer for me. Um, the two right backs in the squad have to be Aaron Mandesacco and Trent Alexander Arnold. It'll just be interesting to see who actually is our number one choice right back and who'll play over them. I'll probably go with Trent as number one choice right back. He's just had an instrumental, phenomenal season for Liverpool, being a massive part of their success. Assist after assist, got the odd goal. Mandesacco has been good for Man United since he signed. Um, such a good one on one defender. They run about him being like the best. Best. One on one defending right back in the world, I wouldn't be surprised. He's been so good for Man United, you can see why they spend that money on him. It's going to be debatable we'll start with them two, but for me, I'd say Trent. But they're both for Arnold players, and I think they're very good at right backs. They've been our two right backs. On to the centre backs, um, I've gone for four centre backs here. So I've gone with the two cent starting centre backs, who I think will most likely be Harry Maguire and Joe Gomez at Manchester United and Liverpool. Gomez has been fantastic for Liverpool this season. One of the unsung heroes for the Liverpool fans and how good he is. He's such a good player, still young. And he has to be our first choice centre back for me, along with Harry Maguire of Manchester United. Again, you could say Maguire's hit and miss, but 
were quite limited centre backs option, and you'd have to say it'd be Maguire would start at the moment. As much as I probably want to start John Stones, it'd be Maguire and Gomez. It's been a few decent performances for Man United, but Gomez is probably our best centre back at the moment. It's got to be them two for me. And it's the two backup centre backs I have gone with. Fikai Tamori of Chelsea, who's been come out of nowhere really. I know he was good at Derby, but he's gone in at Chelsea and he started this season. He's been phenomenal. He's got that wonder goal against Wolves and he's such a good, young, promising centre back. Um, he has to make the squad for me because he's been one of Chelsea's main defenders this season for that reason, I think, because he's playing consistently as well, mainly. He has to make the squad for me. So yeah, I've got Tamari as a backup one. The other backup is it was between John Stones and Tyro Mins. I could have chose Mins easy, I'm sure a lot of people would, but I have gone with John Stones. But he does really need to start playing better for us for Man City because his performances have been pretty poor again this season. He has to start playing more for Man City when he gets his chance. Or even leave if he's not getting enough first team football because maybe a move might do him good. Because I have tried to defend Stones, but he's just so inconsistent at times. But I do think he'll make this squad, but he has to start playing better. So yeah, they're my two backup centre backs. On the two left backs, I've gone with Ben Chilwell, who I expect to be our number one left back. Very good player for Leicester this season. He's such a good left back. Probably one of the best in the Premier League for me. The best English left back we've got. Good up and down that win, overlapping runs, fantastic player. He makes a squad for me and he'll be our number one left back. As a backup left back I've gone with, and the second one I've gone with Luke Shaw of Manchester United. Left a few left backs out, could have gone with Williams from Man United, um, Danny Rose even, but yeah, I've gone with Luke Shaw. I do think he's a good player when he's fit. Just that's the question, can he stay fit? He's no doubt about it, he's a brilliant player when he's fit. When he has played for Man United this season, he's been pretty good as well. Very solid, worthy, good backup left back for us. Now, one of the midfielders, I'll start off with the... Um, Let's have a look. I've gone for five centre midfielders, well, centre midfielders slash attacking midfielders. Start with Declan Rice as maybe the CDM centre midfield. No doubt about it. He's been such a good young talent. Rejected Ireland to play for England. Um, phenomenal player, and I think he could go straight in the team. He's such a such a good promising player. He's definitely the standout player. What's been a poor season for West Ham, and I think he will get his big move one day. But he's look good in the England shirt as well. When he's played. He has to be in the squad. Second midfielder, no doubt about no doubt about this one. Probably the player of the season in the Premier League for me personally, uh, John Henderson of Liverpool, who I've chosen as to be our vice captain at the Euros as well. What a season he's had. Massive, massive part of Liverpool's success this season. When he was injured for the last few games, the struggle without him, it shows how important he is. He doesn't score a lot of goals, he's not a Gerard type of player, but he does the hard work that goes unnoticed. Such a good player, he'll definitely be in the squad, probably a starter as well, most likely. Third midfielder, the more attacking midfielder, I've gone with James Madison again, it's an all-brainer. What a season he's had for Leicester, he, gets, he seems to be getting better and better every season. He's been linked with a massive move for Man United. He's looked good in an England shirt when he's played as well. Um, he has to be in this squad. Could even be a shot of a making team this season. He's been one of Leicester's best players in a fantastic season for them. Such good free kicks, long range shots, he makes his team for me, without a doubt, and maybe a starter again. For the fourth midfielder, now this is a player that's never played for England yet, amazingly, um, Jack Grealish of Aston Villa, poor season for Aston Villa, but he has been by far their best player. Such a such a good talent. He will get his a big move if they go down, no doubt. I know he's got a few problems off the pitch, but he's such a talented footballer. It's worth a lot of money now as well. They're on about fifty million, even more. Um, being at Man United again, um, he has to make the squad and hopefully he finally gets his England chance because he has to. He's such a good player, so talented, so good in the ball. A nightmare for defenders, good at dribbling. Could be a start for us as well. Um, Really has to make the squad for me, no doubts about it. And the final centre midfielder, slash attacking midfielder, I have gone with. Again, he might not be everyone's choice, but he will be for me come 2021 because he'll have played more games in our team, Manchester City, because he'll have played David Silver. And it is the one and only Phil Ford. And I expect Ford to break out and make this squad um, come then. He'll have played more games for us. We all know how talented he is. He's a future England international, and I think he'll be part of the squad. He's getting better and better. He'll be an important player for England. He's been phenomenal in England under 21 shirt this season when he's played. There's no doubts about it. Phil Ford and for me will be in the squad. You could say he's not playing at Man City, but he will play next season. I promise you that now. When David Silver goes, he'll go in and replace him. He'll be in the England team straight away because we all know how talented he is. Ford to make the squad for me. Hopefully he starts as well, I hope. Not just because I'm a City fan, but I like him in general. He's such a good player. Right, so I've gone with four winners here. I'll start with the two right winners. I've gone with Raheem Sterling and Jane Sancho. Not bad at all, eh? 
we all know how good Sterling is on his day. So good for Man City in England, scores loads of goals. Again, he'll probably be a starter. He's such a he's a world class player. Sancho, well, I mean, he's just getting him better and better at Dortmund, isn't he? I mean, wow. Talking about him being worth a hundred million, I'm not surprised. He's been with every big club in Europe. He's hasn't really made a breakout in the England squad yet, but he's been on the bench a lot and um, he hasn't probably started a game yet, but the Euros is his chance to shine. That's his chance to say, right, this is how good of a player I am. This is his chance to shine for me and um, he will show the Europe how good he is. He has to maybe be a star as well. You could put Sterling on the right, Sterling on the left, even Sancho on the right, but yeah, Sancho will be in the squad, no questions about it. He could have had a, have had a big move by then as well and I can't wait to watch him in the England shirt. Two left winners I've gone for is, again, you could... Surprise a few people have forgotten for Callum Hudson and Adoy of Chelsea. Needs to start getting more games for Chelsea, though. He's going to make the squad. I think he will next season. Again, he's so, so promising and talented. We all know how good this guy looks. A um, few one of the uh, games on the Chelsea team, and um, he'll be in England in the national mode out about it. And I think he'll make the squad as he'll get more games for Chelsea next season. So, so quick on the ball, rapid. He's just quality, isn't he? I mean, he's, he looks like he's got a good finish as well when he. Gets in on one and one, so rapid and good. I think he'll be in the squad. As I say, he needs to get a lot of games at Chelsea, or even maybe leave there. Maybe he's not going to, so he makes the squad. But I think he will. He's linked with Bayern Munich as well, but I think he will stay at Chelsea and get games. The other win I've gone for is Alex Oxley Chamberlain. Can play centre mid as well, but I'll put him as a winner. Um, I think he can do more damage there. Off the season he's had at Liverpool. Whenever he's played, he's been phenomenal. Liverpool fans say it as well. He's been a huge part of their success. We all know how good Chamberlain is on his day again. Injuries, unfortunately, getting away of him, but when he's not injury, injured, he's such a good player. I can't believe Arsenal let him go to Liverpool so easy because he's gone to Liverpool and he's been he's gone on leaps and bounds. I remember that scream he scored against us in the Champions League. Well, what a goal! That's Chamberlain at his best. Such a good player when he's injury free, and for me, he's one of he can be one of England's best players and most important. He has to make the team for me. So yeah, Chamberlain makes the final there. Uh, winner. the midfield looks solid there. One of the strikers now. Um, I've gone with three strikers. It was tough leaving a few out of you. But I've gone with Harry Kane, Marcus Rashford and Jamie Vardy. Harry Kane being the captain. Kane, I think we all know he'd be in the squad. He'd be injury-free, hopefully, and he'd be scoring goals for England. World-class striker on his day, scores goals. He's a massive, massive... He's got to be a starting striker. He's a massive part of our success, hopefully. Second striker, Marcus Rashford. Um, We all know how good Rashford can be in his day. He's so, so quick, gets in behind defenders, a good finisher. He's what we need with a pace. He has to make the squad. And the other strike I've gone for is Jamie Vardy. No doubt about it. Hopefully he comes out of retirement and plays for us. Vardy's so quick and he's a massive, massive part of us. So they're the three strikers. Hope you enjoyed my 23-man squad, guys. Please subscribe. It really does help. Get Spread the word about this channel. There's more daily content coming. I hope you enjoyed my 23-man squad. And take care. See you later.